So this week, I thought it would be fun. It wouldn't. It, in some ways, it's going to be really fun. In other ways, it's not going to be fun to have a prospects list. Now, these are horses that I looked at all, and I thought it would be easier to do this, to be honest. And it isn't. I, I started. I thought I'd be frugal. I thought I'd be extremely conservative. Put a list of horses together, and then look through that list and say, okay, who are the ten that I think will make the biggest splash for the stable in 2023? So different jurisdictions, different sexes, different gates. Who would make the biggest splash? And I thought I was being conservative, and then I looked, and my list was at 22. Mm-hmm. And then it went to 24. Mm-hmm. And I had to get to 10. So what I did was I took five horses that I thought were under underappreciated in the stable. You took five. I took five. And I would call them horses that, I don't know what to say. They're going to sneak up on people. I believe that the five I have on my list are going to do some good for the stable. And maybe some of them you didn't see coming. Maybe we don't talk about them enough, or maybe they just haven't made the top 10. But we have 10 horses that I believe are going to make the biggest splash in the stable. And I think our lists are going to be vastly different. Mm -hmm. Vastly different. So these are the top 10 horses that I think when all is said and done, the dust settles for 2024 and we reflect on who did what at the stable. Are you done playing? Who did what at the stable? Who were the 10 that made the biggest splash on Amy's birthday? 2024, April 20th, 2024, my predictions, my projections, my prospects against your prospects for the rest of the season. So we are going to get right into it. Do you want to talk about the five that you think will be sleepers? Whatever you want. I think we'll do that. We'll talk about the five sleepers that people don't talk enough in the stable. Now I'm looking, one of the horses could easily make the top 10. Two of the horses could easily make the They could, yeah. But these are horses that I think didn't make the list but are worth having a a very close look at. Uh, Now, I didn't number my five, did you? No. So we'll just go horse by horse, right? In no particular order. So these are the five horses that didn't make the top ten that I think are horses that we're going to talk about by the end of the summer. Let's go in alphabetic order. Oh, that's a good idea. I can do that. All right. Okay. Who's Who's your first one? In alphabetical uh, order. Century Legion. Century Legion. Century Legion. Okay, tell me why. Uh, well, I know he's. I think he's a nice horse, but I Danny haven't and Dom thinks seen he's the or best gone one. with him enough to put him on my top ten. Mm-hmm. But um, I know that he's. Sorry. No, no. Are you gonna fiddle or are you gonna play with him? No, I know that he's. I I think he's a nice horse. Mm-hmm. Um, he probably should be, you know, on the list, but. It's hard. It's mm-hmm. it's hard to knock any of I'm these other guys list. off. I'm not looking. No, I think you're rubbernecking. No, I'm going to keep my list right here. So <laughs> Century Legion, I agree. Uh, I know that Dominic and Danny, who go with him sometimes, have both said that he they believe he's one of the best ones we have over there. And it's not to say that I don't agree with them, much like you. I haven't sat behind him very much either. It looks like he's a really slick-gated trotter. And I do think he's a really nice horse. But he is not on my five list at all my first horse because it's alphabetical order i like to be doing alphabetical order our my first horse is arrowhead hanover and i know he's on your top 10 i love arrowhead hanover but i when a push comes to shove i can't in good faith put him on this list ahead of anybody now i could have put him on ahead of one horse but it just came down to jurisdictions so i didn't i, I don't you dare change your list I'm not. And when I'm, it comes to I'm Arrowhead just Hanover, to figure out who you would I put think, in front of him I for think, that jurisdiction. I love Arrowhead I Hanover. I had, I said to Amy yesterday, Jog, and I said, uh, now way way back when, uh, one of the very first foundation horses of the stable was Lawmaker, and he did a lot of good for us. And I said, you know, he looks a little bit like Lawmaker, his gait, maybe a little bit shorter, and a little bit lighter in skin color, but. He, he looked a lot, I thought he looked a lot like Lawmaker, and I think he's going to be a very, very good horse for us. I just couldn't in good faith put his name in ahead of these 10. Now, obviously what they've done to date has to play a role. How could I possibly come up with the information to put a horse in the top 10 if there wasn't a component of that? I can't just pull a horse out and say, oh, this horse is the one I think. There has to be some supporting evidence. It can't just be, as you said, alphabetical order. So Arrowhead Hanover, he was my last trim out of my 10. My last trim out of the 10, but I do believe has an extremely bright future. And any one of these five wouldn't shock me if they ended up anywhere near the top five on on the list at the end of the day, uh, at the end of the year. But Arrowhead Hanover is mine, by alphabetical order, my first one, your second one. Chicago Hall. 
Chicago Hall, okay. And, and he was up higher on my other list, but again, jurisdiction's playing a role in mm -hmm. my picks, and I can't... I had to trim an Ontario bread off of my top ten. Okay, so Chicago Hall is your first horse. Um, I think Chicago Hall is an extremely good horse, and I think... And again, I there it's April. It's him. April twentieth. A lot can happen between now and July, right? They can get sore, they can get injured, they can get sick, they can start to fall apart, right? Or they can just not become not as good as you hoped. Yeah. So uh, I'm not going to make fun of any of your picks. Chicago Hall. My first one, Freedom Hill, did not make the top ten of mine, and that bothered me a lot because I think I be I believe if you ask me right now who's our pick for the next generation on the trotting Philly side, it is Freedom Hill as of today. If, if we had to enter the horses today, it would be Freedom Hill. Now, a lot can change. I trained High High Hopes yesterday. She was amazing. But I don't think she wants any part of Freedom Hill just yet. So I, I almost had Freedom Hill in my top 10 list. I just found that there was 10 I could put on ahead. And I could be wrong. I could go over this in two hours and be like, wow, you really missed the boat there. Yeah. But when it came to Freedom Hill, I think she is a filly that's going to do us a lot of good. And as I said, if push came to shove today and I had to enter a horse in the next generation, it would be Freedom Hill. So Freedom Hill, it bothered me to put her on this list. But again, this is tough to do. I'm putting her uh, in the second slot, not numbered, just by alphabetical order, of my top five horses. So I guess this was born, one, from a little bit of spillover. And secondly, how can we not talk about an Arrowhead Hanover and a Freedom Hill? So if they're not going to be in the top ten list, these are horses. Just keep your eye on because they are really nice horses. Next. It was Freedom Hill for me, like, by okay. alphabet. Okay, Freedom Hill, yep. Yeah. Just for pretty much the same reasons. Yep, yeah. she's a nice filly. My third one was I Don't Play Nice, who killed me because I Don't Play Nice, the horse that I said was one of our best horses all year long. Now, I haven't got a chance to sit behind him in a while, and I think he's an extremely good animal. But again, when I looked at the 10 ahead of him, fair is fair. Right now, it's not just about right now, but when I stop, look at everything right now, and then try to extrapolate moving forward, okay, is this horse going to be able to carry his speed as long as the other ones? Is this horse, you know, depth-wise, is he as big, is, or she as big, strong? You know, how do they pick up speed? Just stuff like that. So it bothered me. It was very tough to make this list of five horses, and super tough to make the 10, but I don't play nice as a horse. I think uh, I'm not going to say the same thing as about Freedom Hill. I think we have five or six very good trotting colts, and any one of them could be the horse that probably goes to the next generation if we get an opportunity to. And this horse is definitely on the list and near the top of that list. Very nice horse, and I don't play nice. I'll tell you what he has. If you look at all the horses, all the trotters who have made the least amount of breaks. Oh, for sure. Top of the list. Smartest. Uh, the way, matter of fact way they go about their work. Top of the list. No two ways about it. He's got a lot of gold stars under his belt, and I think he's going to be a nice colt. That's my number three, year four. Melisandre. Melisandre, so she dipped off your top 10 list, and she is on your horses to watch list. That's nothing wrong with that. I don't disagree with that at all. I think she's got some maturing to do mentally, mm -hmm. and I do think that she's going to enjoy the Red Mile surface, mm -hmm. so she might be a little bit later in the year. I've told everybody that. that she's. Um, we're going to race a lot of these horses, like Melisandre. But I know that she's got it in there. Mm -hmm. She just, you got to work hard to get it out, and I do think that's just a mental thing for her. When I go with her, I, I tell you this, and it's hard to do. If you're not a driver, you don't understand it. But I like to have her on her toes before she starts, right? I don't want the alarm to go off at the 5 eighths pole. I want it ringing when she turns to go her mile. And and there's a difference there because if you don't ever give her an inch, she can't take a mile. And it's not that she's a terrible attitude, but does she dog it a little bit at times? Yeah, but you have to go back and wonder is she maybe hurting a little bit? Is she maybe a little immature? And maybe she just needs time. And what you just said was exactly what I said in a video to our clients the other day. There's a very good chance you're not going to see Melisandre make a race until Lexington. And I, I think that no one, any of our partners are going to be, oh my God, I better get rid of her then. Right. She's a nice filly. She's extremely well-bred. She will tell us when she's ready to go. And I completely agree. I don't think it's going to be the end of June or the middle of June. I think she's going to be get ready to go a little bit later. When she gets down on that red mile surface, Amy's 100% correct. When she gets down on that red mile surface and gets to stretch out and her joints aren't hurting her, she's not jamming up on that rock dust. I don't know if I if I put as much stock into that as I did last year when I watched Pickpocket and I watched Arson. The only start that Arson didn't race well was on the stone dust in Pennsylvania on a 5 8 mile track last year. The only start that Pickpocket raced poorly in his entire life last year 
was on that hard track at Hoosier Park in the pouring rain at the end of the year. So that does play a role, and I do believe you're 100% right, Melisandre will be a nice filly, but it'll take as long as it takes. And I, for everybody out there saying, I, yeah, I hear you say that, Anthony, but I just don't ever see it come to fruition. Just go watch a replay of race one at the Meadows today. Time is on my side, undefeated, four for four. A winner in 53-1 and one today at the Meadows. Just been off two months, by the way. So it does. If you take care of the well-bred, good-looking, fast, talented animals that maybe just aren't showing what they need right away, there are, I'm not going to say nine times out of ten, but plenty of times they do come around and there's nothing holding Melisandre back. You're correct. My number four was Manhattan Money. I couldn't put him on the top ten because he hadn't done enough yet. I do like him. I do think he's getting infinitely better. If you're talking about who has improved the, much in the, the most in the last two weeks or the last month, by far it is Manhattan Money. He has come forward in a huge way, but I certainly can't put him in the top ten list, projected list. One, he's not paid into anything but the PA Sires and the Arden. So... What's yeah. the write-up going to be? Yeah. Manhattan Money wins another Sire Stake race? Okay. Uh, when I'm talking about this top 10, these are horses that I think will make a splash for us, for the stable, for themselves, in, in different jurisdictions. And although Manhattan Money, I think, is loaded with talent and now has finally understood his job and is excelling at it, still can't crack the top 10 just yet. He's my number four. You're probably... I put Rosa and AJ. Yep. And... And I feel I felt terrible taking him off the top ten because he's pretty much been on my top ten for months. Should be on everybody's at this point. But I just pacers. I'm sorry. They just they have to go so fast, mm -hmm. and it's to one to two Pet seconds. Pet pocket went in fifty three last year. It's not like the trotters have to go slow. No, I know, but <laughs> a, a nice pacer. Yeah. Is. It's, yeah. it's harder. It's, I don't disagree. You're talking like we own mostly trotters. So. Like I hate when we qualify the pacers and then we're like, hey, now you got to drop nine seconds. But, mm -hmm. you know, like it's just, I just don't, tr it's not that I don't, I don't want to say I don't trust them. It's just that they're ha they have to be so fast every single time they go behind mm -hmm. the gate. They always have to go faster the next week and they have to stay sound. Yeah. And, and I just... I, I think he's going to be a, a player, but I just, it's tough. He's a slam dunk on the on our pacing cold side to go to the next generation. I, yeah, exactly. And I had to put him there. And it, a slam dunk. There's nobody even in the conversation with Rose and AJ. Now, the Philly side got a little tighter over the last couple of weeks on the pacing side, but the cold side is decided. It is decisive. The only way he doesn't go is if he gets injured. And I agree 100%. The Pacers, to me, if you say, what would you rather, you know, and people ask all the time, you know, what do you rather drive, trotters or Pacers? I want to drive winners on either side. But it is, the Pacers do have to go so fast. Now, Rosa and AJ, my only kick, my only concern with him is his mental state, right? Because he does get hot. Now, he isn't a runaway. I know a couple of clients have said, well, would you compare him to this horse or that horse? I, I don't think it's a bad thing. I'm not unhappy with the place he's in, but he does need to grow up mentally. And, um... I, I don't disagree with you putting him on that list at all. So your horse is Rosa and AJ. My last horse is going to surprise you. It's Westland Warrior. Now, Westland Warrior was my number one pick, I think, last week, or number two on my list. I just have 10. I have 10 that I think are going to do wonderful things. And I, I'm, as I'm saying this, I'm almost regretting it because Westland Warrior is paid into the Breeders' Crown. He's paid into all those big races. That actually is what made me put him on there. You can't, you can't tip your hand. You've already tipped your hand. I just, you'll see why when I explain my, and actually the number 10 spot on my list is also a horse we paid into the Breeders' Crown, which made it easier. It was almost like coin flip, right? Which one of these two? And I love Westland Warrior, and I'm super eager to see him race all year long, wherever we can race him. But I did put one, I chose one horse ahead of him. So it was really a coin flip. I left him in the number five spot. Again, this is just alphabetical. My number five spot of horses to keep your eye on, so to speak. Now, that's our top five. Did you get your last one? You get your last one, right? Yeah, mine. So we have our five done. I believe our number ten, our top ten list, totally different. I would be surprised if many of our picks were even close to the same area. So my number ten horse, I'll start. Number ten. No, it's your birthday. You start. Your number ten. My number ten is Westland. Westland Warrior is number ten for Amy. So these are the ten horses that we believe are going to make the biggest splashes for the stable, right? Either win the most races or the money or just do something that, that brings, uh, that shines a light on us. That's assuming he's racing in Pennsylvania. 
That's a good question because he may go to Kentucky, but I don't think he'll go to I Kentucky. I was basing it based on him racing in Pennsylvania. Yeah, no, I think he's going to race in Pennsylvania. Now, I can't say for certain. It depends what we end up doing, uh, who goes to Pennsylvania, who to Oak Grove. But I don't think we have a ton of Pennsylvania trotting colts, right? We have the International Money Horses. We have Wesleyan Warrior. Um, we have one other killer, Arrowhead Hanover. He's it's not going to Kentucky. Money. Yeah, okay. yeah. Well, we have three international monies. I think all three, even Felix, I think, is getting it now. Oh, and he's coming on. Well, Felix has been and also ran for a while, but he's been in 220 twice now, and he and he laid it on everybody the last three weeks. Not perfect, still over on the left shaft, still hog, hogging that right line a little bit. But when push comes to shove, he's getting better every single week. So your number 10, uh, I don't disagree with. Your number 10 is Wesleyan Warrior. My number 10 is She Sits at the Bar. And it was a coin flip between She Sits at the Bar and Wesleyan Warrior. Both are paid in the Breeders' Crown. Both can fly. Both are well-bred. I think it was just my two cents. If I had to pick, if you said you can only go with one of these two that are left today, I love both horses, but I would go with She Sits at the Bar. I really like her. I like everything about her. She's so well-bred, too. Maybe that played a role in my mind, too, is the fact that there is some guarantees with, with She Sits at the Bar because she's so very well-bred. She's a sister to Volume 8 who's standing stud at, at Hanover and a number, obviously the second and third dam is loaded also. But I like the way she goes. I like the way she does her work. She's my number 10. She sits at the bar. Who's your nine? Princess Dream. Princess Dream is your number nine. Okay. Uh, so, tell us. My boys like her. She's, you know, I know she's on the shelf right now, but I, and it might set her back a little bit, but I, I still think she's going to, yeah, the one Show thing up. about the one thing about Ontario, it's such a long, yeah. it's such a long season. You know, you start the end of June and you go right through till October. Um, this filly may not, as you said, she may miss the first part because of this this cut. But two things to take away from that: one, there was no injury, there was no damage done to any ligaments, bones, tendons in the leg. It was all skin. It's a little, it's a little big, and it's going to take some time to heal, but it will heal. And she will miss a little bit of time, but I can't disagree. Listen, this is a sister of War Wee Michelle. Her whole family, first, second, third dam is loaded, and she's got the right attitude. She's always been great. This is a really, really nice filly with a bright future ahead of her, so I don't disagree at all number nine, although my number nine is Rosetta. Uh, Rosetta, I think, again, I'm thinking jurisdiction, right? Jurisdiction, she's New Jersey and Kentucky. I think if we send any to New Jersey, I know that Grand Slam Dio is New Jersey also, so we do have some New Jersey power, but I believe if you're going to see a horse show up in New Jersey and race at the end of June, it might be this one. She's got a lot of talent, a lot of ability, super fast, and has a very, very tough demeanor. I love Rosetta. I think she's going to do a lot of good for the stable. She is my number nine. Who's your eight? My number eight is she sits at the bar. She sits at the bar. Okay, we already talked about her. My number ten. I do you love, have anything I, there? No, not really. I, I do enjoy going with her. Um... But it's, it's one of those things where she just, it's hard to, you don't know what else is out there. Well, and, I can't, yeah. I can't try and guess what Ron Burke has. Exactly. And what, so, you know, anybody has, I just have to look at what we have and, and you can't judge it historically. That's silly to do, but I'm just looking at, you know, our horses and how they are. And she sits at the bar, could land anywhere for me, but I, I put her at number 10 and I don't disagree with putting her at number eight. She's a really, really nice filly with clearly a bright future, no matter what path she chooses. Yeah. She uh, actually, this this week was the first time she's ever missed a training trip. Yeah, you blistered she's, her all up. I did. Yeah. I didn't mean to do that, but... Um, so a lot of the times she, we'll put a blister on the horses. Their knees will blow up. Their hocks will blow up. No big deal. A couple of days, they're fine. Well, she took a reaction to it. She had like... There was like blistered. Her skin. It blew yeah. up. Her skin was, it was irritated. And um, if she was a lesser horse, it probably would have just treaded lightly and trained her anyway. But given the fact that she hasn't... Ever missed like a week never, of training. Like never, never been sick, never yeah. missed. And that's a big deal. People don't realize not missing your training is a big, 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 big deal. So she sits at the bar as your number nine, number eight. eight yeah. My number eight, Resolve Indeed. I think Resolve Indeed, again, uh, I'm looking at jurisdiction and Princess Dream's easy pick. I made her my pick in harness racing updates, uh, in harness racing updates, uh, twos and training video for, for a, 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 a number of reasons. Uh, her breeding, her attitude, her work ethic, everything about her. And Resolve Indeed kind of missed that because she isn't as well-bred. But when you look at her on the track, uh, she, like uh, today you said she was running it a little bit in the straightaways. 
but she's always been a killer. Like I don't think she's going to need hobbles. Yeah, well, eventually. maybe, probably. Uh, but she's a stone cold killer, and I love this filly. I love everything about her. She's just tough, so so tough. Exactly what I love in a horse. She exhibits all of it, all of it. So she is easily my number eight. Your number seven. Jimboree. Jimboree is your number seven, okay? Jimboree's number seven. You go there all the time, so you can yeah. tell them why. Uh, she's She's got a very good attitude. I mean, sometimes no, but for the most part, yes. And she's going to be a nice big filly, and I really think that she's going to like Kentucky. I think you're right. Um, she's got, she's fast. She's going to be a nice big filly. The other two are a little smaller and, and, Jim, and People have to understand, you know, people say, oh, Jim, the Jim Brees, they just don't look big. Well, how could they? They're by Jim Panzee, who was a midget, who, by Chapter 7, who throws midgets. Yeah. So, I don't understand where people would... Now, Jim, that's not fair. Um, chapter 7 throws horses of all different sizes, but he does throw a lot of small horses. Yeah. Jim Panzee was a midget and could fly. He was small. So, is it really that shocking that a second-generation small horse throws small horses? No. They all look the same, but Jim Bree is above she's, average. Yeah. Above average Jim Bree. She's Jim growing Benzie. again. Like, yeah. she went through her spurt a about big, a month ago. Big, big girl. And she's going back through yep. another one. She's going to be she's a big a, girl. She's sound. She's always, she's just, she's a really low maintenance filly, as long as you ever regulate. <laughs> yep. And, uh, I don't know, I just, I can't see her not being productive. I don't disagree. My number seven was country dancing. This is the Poppy Rob filly out of the sister to Sintra. We did send her over to Tim's to get finished off just because I thought she was making breaks on the half. It just was self-confidence, right? You have to go out there and do your work. And sometimes, you know, it gets it gets wormed into their brain that, that they just have to be self-conscious in, in places, right? And rather than changing her shoes or equipment or anything, I said, let's just change her scenery for a little bit and, and uh, send her over there and see how she is. And she has been... Absolutely fantastic since she landed at Tim Twala. So from what I've heard, I've heard from everybody that's gone with her, and they said she is just an absolute dynamo. And I love this filly. She, too, is paid in the Breeders' Crown. A number of things in Kentucky. You want to talk about a horse that, that I believe will excel when they hit Kentucky? Oh. Uh, the speed has never been an issue with country dancing, and I think she is easy number seven. Maybe higher, but definitely number seven in my regard. Six for you. Um, Captain Incredible. Captain Incredible is number six, okay. Based on, obviously, other people's mm -hmm. opinions. Well, you, I could always tell you he was super fast. The first day I went with him, he'd been making breaks on Jason, and, and I hadn't gone with the horse. And the first day I went with him, circled the field, and he looked amazing. And you could tell, one, his attitude. It was the first thing, um, who did I tell the other day about him? And the first thing they asked was, how is his attitude? He said, perfect yeah, nice. he has never pinned his ears he's a stud he's never pinned his ears and you chirped him he has never done anything but bounce forward every time you had asked him now the two people that have sat behind him that are outside the stable are scott McEnany and ron burke scott McEnany said he's an absolute beast and ron burke said to me he goes it's early but he feels like he's the real deal he feels like he's a really good horse and that was a huge uh, lift. It's one thing to hear me say it. One thing to me say, oh, this is a really nice horse. You get a guy like Scott McEnany that, that is responsible for Better's Delight and a number of other, a host of other tremendously talented animals telling you this is a beast. And Ron Burke, who trains, you know, on average, what, 20% of the of the real killers every year in North America or more saying that this horse feels like the real deal. Well, that's different. That's a totally different situation and a totally different um you know, plateau, and, and uh, I, I just think the world of this cult. So, yeah, six easy for you. Six. My number six, I'm going to dive into the Maritimes. Woodmere Betcha is coming in at my number six. Again, jurisdiction, and who's going to who's gonna make a splash? I don't know how good the horses in PEI will be. Nobody does. But I can tell you one thing. This is a very, very good filly. She, she, last week, she was coming off making breaks. She pulled her hobbles in. Danny had worked with her, changed her gear, and I, and I worked her hard two weeks ago, and she... She just absorbed it all and just took off. And I was floored. I could not believe how good this horse was. I went with her today, moved her back to the front, and I almost had to pull her over backwards to let you guys to catch up. And then after the wire, we went into the turn, and the one place she made breaks was the turns, and I let her rock. All as fast as she could lay her legs through the turn into the back stretch, didn't put a ripple in. This is a very, very nice horse. Three-quarter sister to Woodmere Steel Deal. 
And if you'd asked me at any point before the last two weeks, she wouldn't have shown up in my top 20. I just thought, she, yeah, she's a nice little maritime bred filly. We'll see if we have some fun with her. No, no. This is a nice horse. Woodmere Betcha is number six for me. Number five. Resolve Indeed. Resolve Indeed. Okay, you can tell them something that I haven't said. Because she was my number seven. She's your number five. You tell them. You go with her. You've gone with her the last three times. I just, I really like her attitude and her work ethic. And she, I don't know, I didn't really move her in a good spot today. And she just excelled through it. Especially well, since she was running out and I moved her in the, the last turn. Um, I just didn't want you guys to get away on her. But she... She pushed her all the way through the wire. I mean, I could have. I maybe. Could've what? Could've I, what? I maybe could have uh, beat you if I had. No a... shot. Oh. No shot. That colt was dialed in today. Dialed in. He was very good. Now Amy's right. I got the jump on her uh, with Trevino, but I was so pleased to see that colt come forward. Remember, this is swinging senorita's brother. This is a cult we were all quietly cheering for because she meant so much to, much to us. And he's been present. He's done his work. But has he wowed anybody? Not before today. And I gave him every opportunity to look lackluster today. And he excelled. And I love that about him. Resolve indeed. You don't have to convince me on her. She could easily be one of our best horses. Could easily be one of the best horses we've ever had in Ontario. I could see that happening. The only thing that will slow her down is God-given ability. Yeah. And that will that is the <laughs> great equalizer. When they go in behind that starting gate, in June, and then race subsequently thereafter. Give them one or two races, and then you'll know everything. You'll know everything you need to know for the most part, and it can change quite a bit. Uh, the winds can change quick when it comes to horses, and that is the great equalizer, that big starting gate. So, yes, uh, five, not shocked at all. Uh, my number five, Rose Run Alexandra. Um, if you'd asked me any time before now if she was a lock for the next generation, the answer would be easily yes. Foxy Seaside is really coming on and starting to give her a scare and starting to look good. Now, Rosen Alexander had been sick three yeah. weeks ago and had been a little flat for the last couple of weeks. We've been very protective of her. Now, Jason said he put her on the front today, which I knew he would do, and he said she toyed with him. She was very, very... I don't know if he said he toyed she with him. She can go... But she, she is so fast. There. But she yeah. understands her work. Yeah. That has always been the, the hiccup for the Dancing Yankees is their mental acuity, their their maturity, their, their immaturity mentally... And with this filly, she just puts it all together and looks so sweet on the track. Uh, easily could have been higher than number five, but definitely number five is Rose Run Alexandra. Four. I have Arrowhead. Arrowhead. Arrowhead Hanover at four. I, I had to twist your arm. I, do. I had to twist your arm. So I told Amy how much I I love this filly, how much I liked her, and Amy's like, er, this colt, and how much I liked him, and how talented I thought he was, and you always just kind of dismissed him, uh, and in a matter-of-fact way, oh, Arrowhead, oh, Arrowhead, Arrowhead, and now he jumps all the way to number four, well, wowzers. Well, you said jurisdiction. Listen, 100%, I'm just surprised oh, to hear Arrowhead Hanover's name at number and four. And I had to take off an Ohio trotter. No problem. To do that. I'm I'm tickled. That, that Arrowhead Hanover made it. No, I'm going to take your oh. toy, okay? Yeah. I'm tickled that Arrowhead Hanover has made it all the way to number four. I need to hear how he got to number Actually, four. I'm listening. Actually, you sealed the deal was Jason telling us okay. today. He was in with the Pacers. I put him in with our best Pacers. I put him in the deepest right with yeah, them. deepest part of the ocean. I thought it was time to test him, and I would put Daryl on him. Daryl's never gone with him, I don't believe. He has. It's only been once, and I wanted to put him in a spot. Are, are you done? I Not wanted to put... Either. You're making me dizzy. I wanted to put him in a spot where if Jason had called CDI, Arrowhead was back a bit, but he went good. No, no. He said Arrowhead was amazing. In fact, he said he thought he was the best trotter of the entire day. He yes, was in with Pacers. He, he was in a bad spot. I put him in the worst spot he could be in, and he excelled. And that's what winners do. So I, I'm not I'm not shocked you put him in four. I am shocked you put him at number four. I'm not shocked. Now, I didn't even put him on my top ten list. I know, I've loved the horse it. for months. I'm surprised about that. But I... I I'm very happy to hear that he's grown on you and that wow. he's made it all the way to number four on Amy's list. My number four, Chicago Hall. I think Chicago Hall is going through a growth spurt. I think he's an incredibly talented colt. I think he was good today, and I think he's going to stay good. He's muscle mass, so the only concerns for me are his, knee, are his knees. He's a heavier colt. 
or his knee's going to hold up. I told him, told everybody in a video the other day, the best muscle masses we've ever had were kind of frail, right? Kind of the the Phillies. I like the Phillies how were good. They are built. Yes. Or, well, Princess well, Dream. Well, Princess Dream, Tipsy, and Dixie. Yeah, they're right? small and they're yeah. not a little overweight. smaller. Exactly. Yeah. No, Chicago Hall is not. This is a bigger, stronger Colt. Is he going to hold up? I believe so. And if he does hold up, I I might be wrong about number four, but it won't be because him being south of four and be north of four. Right. I think this Colt has got all the ability in the world. Great attitude, good breeding, very good breeding, and I think he could be a really, really, really nice horse for us. So I put him at four, easily number four. I've gone with him twice. He obliterated the horses he was in with both times. I think this is a really nice colt, and he was easy number four for me. Your number three. Alexandra. Rose and Alexandra. Yeah. Okay, you can tell them why, because you've actually gone with them more than I have. Um, well, I don't really know what else to say. She's, like you said, she's smart. She knows what her job is. You can put her on the front, or you can be first over, or you can be second over. It doesn't matter. She mm -hmm. already knows what her job is. And she's very polite because a lot of those... Dancing and Yankees? Yes. Poo. But she does see the... She's, they all see stuff. Like They, they see, see stuff people, that's yeah. not there. They see stuff that is there. But she's she sees it and then she's over it. The other ones, they don't they so much do that. No. So, um, so I like that. And I just like that when she comes in from training, she does not look like she worked that hard. Yes. She's not exhausted. She's not, you know, oh my gosh, like, and then, and she'll eat everything. Like the, the when she was sick, I was like, she must really not feel good mm -hmm. because I was just like, what, what's going on here? Mm -hmm. and, and then I noticed her being a little sassy again in the shed row and stuff. And I said, well, she's feeling better now. Yeah. She, and she's been training really good. She's been such a good horse. I can't disagree. My number three out of my I, list. You were looking What's right at my matter? list. You are not to look at my. That's my list. Okay. My number three is Jimboree. Um, I think the Jimboree, when all the dust settles this year, I think Jimboree is going to be a filly we talk about quite a bit. Uh, big, as Amy said, much bigger than the other chimpanzees. I told you this at the Lexington sale. When I looked at all the chimpanzees, she's not her pedigree is not as deep as obviously as um, Melisandra. But I thought there was a lot more going on that met the eye in the sale. I like the placing in the sale of her. We bought her for, for next to nothing, especially considering the, the average price for chimpanzees. And you bought her because she tried to kill everybody every time we brought her That out. had nothing to do with okay. it. Okay. Um, but Jimboree, uh, I, I just think that she's she's got a lot to offer. And, and I've only gone with her once, and she absolutely toyed with everybody the day I went with She jogged. I like that about her. It's time to go. She had her ears up doing it, too. She wanted more work, and, and I love that about her, too. She's my number three and, and made an argument in my mind to be a little higher. But number three is Jimbery. You're number two. Rosetta. Rosetta made it all the way to two from nine on mine. Wow. But you've been I, going with Rosetta, so I'm she, curious. I want to hear. She is. You could throw the lines at her, and she won't make a break, first of all. Second mm -hmm. of all, she's very. she's not so polite. And when she knows it's time to train because I've jogged her on jog days and she doesn't wear the same um, mm -hmm. headgear and she is very quiet for a walner. When she goes out to the front track with her stuff on, she knows. She knows mm -hmm. she's going to train. But then she turns and she's very polite during the mile. So mm -hmm. she's smart. But she's she's got, just anxious. She's very feisty. She's tough. I know mm -hmm. that because mm -hmm. she's, I just, I don't know. She's got kind of got all of the right tools and she's just got that that feistiness that I think will help her in New Jersey <laughs> I agree it, it, it I knew she had to be on my top 10 list I didn't know where to put her it was tough to fit her in I put her towards the bottom of my list but I, I really think that this filly's got a lot going on I think she is going to make it to New Jersey to race there uh, even though she's New Jersey and Kentucky yeah I think she may start in New Jersey and not a lot of her horses I would say that right now but she is my number two is Memento Mori. I know I'm going to guess he's your number one, but Memento Mori, uh, I told you guys over the last three weeks, just everything about this guy screams steak horse. And I don't know how deep he is. I don't know what kind of steaks he, we're gonna, probably going to race him in Kentucky. For those, for my partners out there, they're like, ah, oh, can't wait to see Mori race in New York. Well, you might have to wait. He may not see New York. He may be in Kentucky and stay in Kentucky. But I think this horse got a lot going on. I just... When I look at him and I say, and I told you guys, if, if somebody put a gun to my head and said, I need one horse right now 
that will win a stake in 2024. My pick is Memento Mori. I think he is just in a super talented colt. He was really rude. I've never been so pleased to castrate a horse in my life as Memento Mori because he was an absolute renegade when we broke him. Nothing about him pleased me when we broke him. And then when we castrated him, it took about three weeks and immediately it hit. And you could tell, oh, geez, he's kind of a fast horse, actually. He's still a little rough around the edges, but he was get better and better and better. And now he's just a killer. And I love Memento Mori. You've gone with him a few times. And, um, he's nice. He is fast. I haven't gone with him that much, but I've seen him plenty. Uh, the last time I went with him was when we changed all his gear. And that was months ago. But he, he looks very, very good on the track. I think it is your number one. He's my it? number one. So you can tell them if something I didn't already. Well, there's not really much to add. He's just so nice. He's got such a nice gait. He gets around Northfield like like that. So if he does go to New York, that's an asset. Mm -hmm. um, but he's got a very good attitude. And he, like you said, we took that. We had that more aggressive bid on him. Mm -hmm. We've since taken it off. Taken everything he's off. He's completely fine with that. Mm -hmm. And I honestly think you could change whatever you, you could add or take away stuff. And he, he doesn't care. He knows. He just goes out there the and thing. does it. A lot of that gear, when you have a horse that wants to compete, that wants to do good, the equipment changes there. Sometimes you feel good about yourself because you made the change and the horse went better. But I think more times than not, if you didn't have that equipment, it's funny it's because I say to somebody all the time, you say, oh, you got to shoe him like this and you got to have these shoes on him and, it, and, and this is how he raced good. And sometimes it just... Maybe five different kinds of shoes would have helped. Yeah. And with Maury, I think you're right. Put a head pole on one side. We had line poles on him or Murphy blind. We had a I don't severe know if bit. He's gonna need yeah. hobbles. Yeah. I mean, we just Maybe. done so much different with him, and it's all worked. It's all helped. He's just a good horse. So he's your number two. Do you have any idea? Want to guess who my number one is? No, he's my number one. I think he's my number. He's my number two. He's your number it one. It must be the pacing goal. Which one? Captain Incredible. It is Captain Incredible, and the reason being Captain I can't Incredible. It's not green glitter. She didn't even make my I, top ten or my five. She didn't even make your five. And you know well, what? Well, I can't. I couldn't I, put her in my five. I talk about her every week, so it's not no, like this is a horse you gotta watch. I talk about her every week. Well, you know what? I had to take off. If she had, sits at the bar or green glitter, and I do like she sits at the bar, and she is staked to. It's it, not shit. She, I said she sits at the bar. <laughs> oh, they said shit. No, that's what you thought. She sits <laughs> at the bar. Um, I had to take Aunt Lily and Grand Slam Dio off. It's tough. This was tough to do. There's going to be people say, Anthony, how can Rose Run AJ not be on your top Ugh. 10 list? How can he not be on there? I know. How can Princess Dream not be on your top 10 list? She's not on my top 10 list either. I looked at the horses that I thought would make the biggest impact to the stable, right? And you can say, well, Captain Incredible's not even trained in Ohio. I don't need him to train in Ohio, right? This isn't about what they're doing right now. This isn't about, oh my God, I just, I just think this horse is a nice horse in Ohio and he's trained. To... This horse has been trained by multiple people. Since we broke Yeah, them. so you have more opinions. I'm looking at two people that have no affiliation with the stable. Scott McEnany knew he had him for five, six weeks. So it's not like his payment for training was yeah. contingent on him. You know, if he'd have said, Anthony, ah, he's okay. Yeah, nice Cole. You know, nice Cole. Does this work well? I really like him. He could have said that. Yeah. Ron Burke could have said nothing. Could have went and said, yeah, he's okay. Yeah, yeah Listen, hey, like him. Both of them rave about the Colt. Scott McEnany's quote, he's a beast. Ron Burke's quote is, he feels like the real deal. Now, lots can change. Keep in mind, even with Ron Burke and Scott McEnany, or it's me, or Amy, or Jason, or anybody, yeah, no one knows. When that gate starts and the lights go on and they start rolling into position, at that point, you have a better idea. After a race or two, you have a pretty good idea. But when you have people saying these things that aren't affiliated with the stable, saying these things about a horse, it piques my attention, right? It doesn't matter to Ron Burke how much we paid for him. It doesn't matter to Scott McEnany. I sent them a horse to train. I asked for your opinion about him, and it was unsolicited. They gave it. Their own free will. And when I look at that horse, I know what I thought about him when I sent him there. I, I, that's how much I thought of him. I sent him there. I thought that four or five weeks on a mild clay track would do this horse a world of good, and I do believe it has. Now, the next question will be, where is he going to race? Now, Ronnie would have the option to have the horse, but he has those own horses that he is obligated to. To focus on. Yeah. And I'm I don't sure believe, I'm not certain that Captain Incredible will step foot in Pennsylvania either. He may go directly to Kentucky and if he doesn't race, much like Melisandre, if he doesn't race to Lexington, I don't care. Got about eight, ten, maybe twelve races. Pick the ones you want to pick. 
And I think this horse has all the talent in the world. When I look at who can make the splash, he already made a splash. It's the most expensive horse we ever bought, right? He has staked to everything on planet Earth that we could stake him into. This was going to be our, and we, time is on my side, was expensive when we bought him. Four for four in 2024. Look great today, right? He's we a, made, we he's, made a captain. he's a Captain Crunch. Mm-hmm. He's Captain Crunch. And and there have been mistakes. We paid a lot of money for a good brace for landing. He's just a horse. Mm-hmm. I like him. He's just a horse. So you never know. And I tell everybody, what's the difference between a really good horse and a nice overnight horse? Not as much as you think. Not at all. So there's going to be a lot to discern, a lot to separate as we go into this year. There's going to be a lot of horses that get on the list. And feel free to say, I told you so when the summer starts. But that's my top ten list. And this is Amy's top ten list. And at some point next year, we're going to revisit this. And laugh. And laugh, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully not laugh. Right. But laugh, maybe, about the horses we Well, we, we were could. listening to the one from... Yeah, we weren't what, that far off. We weren't four that far years off. ago, was it? We weren't that far off. We weren't that far off. Mm, so bit. when it comes to uh, the horses of the stable, super happy with what I've seen from the two-year-olds so far. Ecstatic about what I've seen here in Ontario with, with a limited selection. It's frustrating, frankly. like, it's frustrating... To even make these lists because like well there's gonna be people that say i can't believe like, a tron is on there yeah, i can't believe princess again people like, are gonna complain i just did the best i could to look at what we had across the board my list was I 24 even had Cado on there for yeah, a minute 24 horses i had on my list mm-hmm. and i expected to get to to 10 i can make a list i can make an argument for any one of the other 14 that didn't make the list and to the be other one list. the dancing whatever I yeah dancing by name. myself 100 like our next generation horses someone didn't even make yeah. it it's yes. Crazy. Yeah, it's I don't know who the Colt's going to be. I crazy. think I think the pacing Colt that's sewn up, it's going to be AJ. Try to, all the other distinctions are all up for grabs, and it's going to be super cool to watch those horse jostle as we get closer to the start of the summer. And it's funny, too, because now it's not just like, okay, who's our best one? But if we have, like, two or three, then you're going to be like, okay, hey, which one's not going to make a break or make a mistake? That's right. Because it's not just going to be who's fastest. 100%. Who's not going to Who blow has up? the best shot to get to that winner circle? Yeah. That is going to be the question, and it's going to be it's it's going to be cool to start the summer like that. But when I look at what we have going on right now, I'm trying to figure out who's going to go everywhere. We have a bunch of horses that are eligible to something in Kentucky. I think you're going to see Green Glitter and Arrowhead Hanover show up for sure in Pennsylvania. Uh, who's the other good Pennsylvania filly? Green Glitter and uh... my filly. <laughs> yes, or... she sits at the bar. Right, she's definitely going to be in Pennsylvania because I don't think she's Kentucky either. Mm. So Pennsylvania will be a lot of fun. Ohio, we always have a lot of fun. Ontario's the surprise of the year. I think we have six very, very legit trotters. So hard to tell here. Though. Six, yeah, it is. But we have six. I watched Louis Philip Jog resolve Philly today. She looked beautiful. Yeah, they no, were no, talking it was about a green her. Man, it was a green Manalishi. They talked about her last time. Yeah, green yeah. Manalishi. Danny said that he has a nice resolve in green Manalishi Philly. I saw. His green Manalishi jog today. She looks beautiful. So you never ever know what's going to happen. Um, as I said, when the lights of the starting gate go on, as of right now, super excited about Princess Dream. She's going to get there. Going to be a little late to the party, but she's going to get there. Super excited about Resolve Indeed. All our Colts look legitimate. You know, look like they're going to make some sort of a splash. Pace and Horses got a little work to do, right? My Wicked Heart. I like my Wicked Heart. She's just got a little work to do. Uh, Cleveland Masha is back sound now for all my partners mm-hmm. in Cleveland Masha. I do believe she bruised that. I think she just just hit it and bruised it. But Danny said she's sound now and jogging sound, so she'll be back at it soon enough training. And then uh, Woodmere Betcha, the the Maritime Bride, I just I can't say enough about her. She has wowed me over the last two weeks. So that's our best job at uh, our best attempt at giving you our prospects list for 2024. Feel free to send me your list if you want, and I'll be sure to mention it if I get an opportunity. Uh, but it has to be unbiased. You can't just use your horses that you like because you own them. It's so hard. It's hard to do that. It's super hard. Like but you got to be unbiased. So with that, I'm gonna let you guys go. We'll talk to you soon. We still got an opening video to do. Do you need me for that? Absolutely. Need. It's your birthday, and we will. Yeah. But we'll be back in a second with an opening video for this week at the stable.ca.